Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to be doing an end of year art review uh, with you. I was kind of gathering all the pictures I created this year and thought it'd be fun to kind of walk through them and chat about what I created. Like many of you, this year started out with big goals and big dreams of what I wanted to achieve, and I started working towards those goals, and then March happened, and those kind of got put on the back burner and survival mode kicked in. But it's been fun to review them and see what I did create, and I'm excited to walk through them with you. So I started this year out by making a soft pastel sketchbook and just playing in it. I wanted to be able to just create pastel pieces that weren't big pieces or just floating around my studio. I wanted them kind of all contained and have it be a safe place to experiment. So I created a soft pastel sketchbook and I just played in it. But I also played in a lot of my other sketchbooks. I experimented with gouache again for the sunset piece. I pulled out my acrylic paints and did like black and white paintings in my sketchbook. I just wanted to play. Um, at the end of every year, I get a big rush of commissions with the holidays, which is fantastic. But by January, I'm ready to just play and experiment. And that's what I did in January and February was just experiment. And one of my favorite things I did was using colored pencils with Gamzol. Gamzol is a medium used a lot in oil paints to help thin out the paints. And it breaks down the colored pencil and allows it to blend almost like paint. And so it's really fun to use on those early layers of colored pencils so you can get a lot of blending in and soft transitions. There's a lot of technical things that are wrong with this sketch in my sketchbook, but it was so fun just to play. So then I painted this lion. This was a warm up piece actually for a commission I had lined up and it the commission was for a colorful dog portrait and I had it painted in this style for a long time and so I did this line as kind of like a warm-up exercise to get back into it. And then I painted this dog portrait. Um, if you don't know, when I first started working as a professional artist, a lot of my work was colorful animal portraits, whether it was pet portraits or like wild animals. A lot of them were related to like this colorful, whimsical watercolor scheme. And so I did this one and it was so fun and I loved the way it turned out. It's probably one of my favorite paintings of the year just because I love just how the colors played with each other and the crisp background it, it just it was just really satisfying to to create so then i started a commission that really scared me and stressed me out a bit i don't do a ton of portraits of people um, whether it's commissioned or otherwise i've done a few but they kind of scare me. And so this one was a little stressful for me, but I was really excited and really inspired by the lighting and the colors in the picture. And I really wanted to try using my soft pastels because most of the portraits that I had done were black and white up until that point. And so this piece was an opportunity for me to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and try new techniques. And I'm so glad I did because this piece is one of my favorite pieces of the year and it really helped shape this year in terms of getting commissions and what kind of projects I got to work on. I then started in on my two biggest commissions um, I've ever had. Um, they're actually my two largest paintings I've ever done aside from full-on murals. I did this wave painting which is really similar to one I did at the end of last year. This one just has a little bit different of a color scheme and a few other minor differences. And it's about five inches wider and five inches taller than that previous one, if I remember right. I know it's about five to 10 inches bigger. Um, this piece was really, since it was similar to the other one, went pretty quickly and it was just more of trying to find ways to differentiate it from the other one so that 
both my clients can have original pieces that are unique to them. I then did this giant garden painting and this was for the same lady that bought the wave piece and this one she wanted it to be more whimsical she didn't want the flowers to look overly realistic but this piece is so big it is about five five and a half feet by four four and a half feet I can't remember the exact dimensions on it off the top of my head but it was huge for scale that little practice painting on the easel is nine by 12 inches in size so this big one was a little bit daunting and overwhelming at times but I just kind of broke it down into pieces would work on it take a break work on other projects and come back to this one with fresh eyes and the client ended up loving it and she has it in her home and that is all that really matters to me um, when I'm working on these pieces is I want my client to be excited when they see the artwork I create for them. When I was taking breaks from the big garden painting, there was two pastel pieces that I would work on. And these were kind of like sister paintings. They weren't the same, but they were supposed to go together and they were going to the same home. One was of a pink sunrise and she wanted some flower elements and she wanted the lake in the distance with the sunrise being reflected over the lake and it was of a specific lake and it happened to be one that I had visited as a child and so it made it really fun to create this painting because I got to draw on all of those memories of visiting that lake and running around it when I was in cross country and taking my own kids there later on and it really influenced that painting and it was so fun to create. The other piece she wanted me to create was a sunset over this lake and she wanted it forested and she wanted a canoe and, with, and have it be an orange sunset with kind of like a moody cloud kind of vibe to it. And this piece, designing it and pulling from memories and pulling from reference photos I had and just different things brought me back to when I was a kid in Oregon. Uh, going canoeing on a lake on a family vacation with my dad and my stepmom and my brother and my stepsister and how much fun we had on that trip and the feelings that I had just having so much fun with my family and the love we felt and I was able to really channel that when I created the piece and I feel like when you are able to emotionally connect to your paintings on some way your paintings turn out better and this was one of those projects that I was really able to be reflective and connect to what I was painting. During the same time I was working on all of those landscape paintings and pastel pieces I was also working on a couple uh, doctor portraits and these medical portraits were be a direct result of me being willing to push myself outside my comfort zone with that first one. And it was a really good lesson to me to remind myself that if I want to improve my skills as an artist and if I want to have more opportunities to share my work with others, I need to not always stay in my comfort zone and my little bubble that I feel comfortable in. I need to push myself out of there and stretch and grow. And that's what happened with these medical portraits. And I can see the growth between this one and that first one so clearly. And I'm so proud of that. So then I did this third medical portrait. And it was the last piece I did before I moved in the summer. And so this one was done with a lot of chaos going on around it. I was packing to move. I was still homeschooling my kids and my husband was working crazy hours in the hospital. And it was, it was just a really stressful time, but this piece was, was really a good lesson for me. One, I'm really proud of it. And it pushed me in ways that I never had thought before because I was working from multiple reference photos and kind of combining them, which is a lot harder to do than just having one really good one to work from because I had to make everything look like it belonged together. And I don't know very much about 
neurosurgery and how you hold tools or what kind of tools you would even use. And so I had to rely on my client's knowledge. I had to ask some of my friends in the medical field to be able to make this one happen. And there's some creative liberties with it, but I'm really proud of it. And the lighting turned out awesome. But the real lesson I learned from this was to not rush. If I have the urge to rush and speed through something, that's a sign that I actually need to do the opposite and to walk away and take a break because mistakes happen when you rush and especially when you're feeling that anxiety to like get it done now. And so this one I had to go back and fix stupid mistakes because I was so focused on just finishing it up so I could finish packing my house. So it was a good reminder for me to just slow down and to take a break and to walk away for a few minutes so I can clear my thoughts and think things through clearly. Once that painting shipped, it became a whirlwind of things that happened. I packed up all my art supplies, packed up the rest of the house in a U-Haul, moved to another state, closed on our house, moved into our house, and then instantly started demoing And part of that demo was building a studio space for me. And so our house was in chaos and I couldn't start painting until about four months after we moved in. But it was completely worth the work and sacrifice we did to create it because it functions so much better than any of my other studio spaces, even ones that were bigger because I was able to customize this one, fit what I needed it to do. So the first thing I started painting once my studio became functional was these little wave paintings. They're just little tiny practice pieces I was doing to kind of get back in the swing of watercolors and also to start brainstorming for a piece I wanted to do for my own house once the rest of the construction was done. And so I was just brainstorming ideas, messing with color palettes and experimenting with metallic inks and kind of seeing what I could create. And I plan on working on this piece um, in this upcoming year, and you'll probably be following along on that journey. Basically, once those wave paintings were done, it was time for me to start planning and designing paintings for my upcoming watercolor class that I was teaching at a local university. And so I spent quite a few weeks kind of designing these pieces, finding good reference photos to work from, and then figuring out how to teach them step-by-step to a live class. Because most of the teaching I had done had been through YouTube tutorials. So that took a little bit of time to get used to and took quite a bit of preparation. But once I did those, I started working on some more commissioned pieces. So for this piece, I was contacted by a lady who wanted to commission an art piece for her friend who had lost both her dog and her cat this year. And so I was working off of some just reference photos that were found online and they weren't necessarily the greatest pictures and trying to combine them together was a little bit tricky, but I was so grateful I could work on this project and create this piece for her as she's grieving the loss of her beloved pets. It's something I've done in the past and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work through their grief and find comfort. From that, I jumped right into working on some uh, sailing seascapes. And so this was the practice piece I did for a commissioned uh, painting. And I loved it so much, I actually put it in my husband's office. Because with this one, I was experimenting with different techniques and different color combos. And it was just a really fun experimentation. Now this is the one I did that ended up going to my client and there's some differences between that and the practice one. And some of that is just because I needed it to fit what my client had envisioned. My last two commission pieces for the year were two more doctor portraits. The first one was this interventional radiologist and this one was kind of a fun challenge because I had a background to paint and not only did I have more of a background to paint than the other ones, I had a dual light situation. So you have light coming in from the windows behind the interventional radiologist, but you also have light hitting his face from the screen he's looking at. And so it created a fun challenge, but also allowed me to play with colors in a way I hadn't before. And I really liked the background and how it has these kind of plums and blues. 
And so it reads as dark, but it's not black or dark brown. And so it, it just created a lot more of a visual interest to the piece. My last medical portrait was this one. And this one, I tried really hard to see how realistic I could get it and it, how soft I could get the blending. Sometimes I am more impressionistic with my soft pastel pieces and I wanted to see how realistic I could get this one. One of the challenges I faced with this piece was the fact that part of his hand wasn't visible in the reference photo. It was actually blocked by another person. And so I had to use my husband as a hand model to kind of gauge the hand position and the angle that it would be situated. I ended up being incredibly proud of this piece and it was a great commission piece to end the year on. Um, it left me excited and ready to push myself even further and to try more portraits in the future. And then as a form of self-torture, I painted the same apple multiple times to experiment on the effects of different pastel papers and how they layer. And I did a whole video describing that if you want to check it out. I have spent the last few weeks of December just painting some fun winter scenes and just experimenting with pastels. This year has been kind of a roller coaster of a year with some really, really low lows and some of the highest highs um, that I've experienced in my life. And with those trials, I think it made me appreciate the highs and the positive things. And it also made me prioritize what's most important to me and my family. So I'm, I'm grateful for 2020, but I'm excited to see it go. And I have some big plans for this next year and I can't wait to share them with you. Um, stay safe, stay warm, and I hope this new year treats us a little bit more gently than the last. See you next time.